Well, there's no doubt that Maine's claim climate is changing from the warming waters in the Gulf of Maine to the ice on the lakes coming later and leaving earlier in the year. And we know how the future of Maine's changing climate will impact our seasonal activities such as boating and snowmobiling. But how will the warming waters affect the hundreds of species of fish in Maine? In our ongoing series on Maine's changing climate, New Center Maine's Jack Molman shows us how researchers are looking to an ancient species of fish to answer a question about the future. What do you do when the leaves change, the temperature drops, but your local pond hasn't frozen over yet? You get in one last fishing trip. But this duo of graduate students from UMaine and Orono is after the elusive and extremely rare Arctic char. Ah, those are beautiful. The fish, as its name implies, lives in the Arctic Circle in several continents around the world. So why are we in Otis, Maine, 1,500 miles from the Arctic Circle, on a boat with UMaine researchers pulling out two dozen of these fish? It's actually an ancient tale. When you go back 10, 12,000 years ago, there was skyscrapers of ice covering all of Maine. And as those pulled back from the landscape, the Arctic char were some of the first fish to kind of chase those glaciers back. The first freshwater fish to live in Maine after the Ice Age, once inhabiting the three northern New England states, now only existing in 12 small bodies of water. And Maine has all of them. Brad Erdman is a graduate student studying these fish. Along with his friend studying marine biology, Julie, the two head back to shore with the rare fish. Oh, and did we mention one of the only 12 remaining lakes where Arctic char currently live in Maine is actually the same pond where the city of Bangor gets its drinking water? A great base camp for groundbreaking research, 20 years in the making. The duo takes each arctic char, scanning it for a tag and measuring the fish while taking a photo, making sure it's safely under anesthetic before handling the rare fish. Each one of those fish gets a little, little microchip implanted into it, and we can go back through 20 years worth of data. But why would you go through all of this effort? I think those two things go pretty hand in hand. So uh, these fish were chasing the glaciers, so they're the most cold adapted fish there are. So in a warming climate, we really want to focus on uh, some of those cold adapted species to see how they might be getting affected by a warming environment. Doing this research, according to UMaine, will tell us how this population of Arctic char can adapt to a changing climate, something known all too well in Maine. So just knowing that all these things are interconnected. The researchers say the studies done into how this rare Maine Arctic char thrive now in warmer waters can tell us how more common cold water fish could adapt in a changing climate. Jim Thicket from Honey Badger charters at Sebago Lake in southern Maine. He's on a late season hunt for not Arctic char, but a similar cousin of the species, lake trout, a cold water fish, a staple to Maine's fishing culture, but invasive to Sebago Lake. The fishing has changed dramatically in the last, I'd say, 10 years. Jim says lake trout like to stick to the bottom where it's cold, but he's noticed they also start to venture to warm waters to eat food and then return to cold water. As far as the temperature goes, it's hard. This is a really deep lake, so the lake trout and any cold water species can find the temperature water they like to be in. Um, but the question really is, is, is there food? Hearing about the research being done about how Arctic char live and adapt in warmer water brings Jim hope for the future of fishing at Sebago Lake, which, like other main bodies of water, will continue to warm. Main lakes on average are experiencing visible signs of climate change. That's Dr. Michael Kennison supervising the work going on in Otis. He says the char have adapted to warmer water by spawning in cooler areas of lakes and learning to eat fish and insects that only exist when that water is warm. These Arctic char populations are sort of a, a canary in a coal mine for this part of the world. Uh, but we have many other cold water fishes that live in our region. What we see with these Arctic char may help us to learn how to make predictions for those species in years to come. And as these students finish up the day's work, they make their way back to the water to release the Arctic char. One step closer to understanding the mysteries of adaptation in a changing climate. In Otis, Jack Molmud, New Center, Maine.